Well, welcome back everybody. This is Dusty Circuit here to bring you another episode of the series I'm doing on my history on ACO. And if I remember my correctly, this is going to be my fifth episode, I believe. But if I'm not correct, I'll correct that in editing. But anyway, to recap of basically what all the past four episodes were about. So, I had joined ACO in a rather unfortunate uh, time. It's where basically the, the server was uh, clearly in decline and in uh, within the course of a few months have declined so much that there was maybe like three players on at a time at most and actually for quite a while it was off it was often for no players at all to be on and in fact uh, in, in fact Wu actually claims that the server, uh, if it had lost like any more members, like but uh, then like if things have gotten any like just a little bit worse, the server could have actually closed. And uh, I'm, I'm not joking. Like for like the enough members, if if, if if even any more members would have left or at least ended their subscriptions, then. It's possible that ACO could have closed, but this, uh, and in fact, uh, just of course, for, for any of my viewers or my newer viewers, Blue, uh, I, is a, she's known as Just Blue 333, and she's one of the, the most famous admins on uh, ACO, but she's also admin on AC, but she's more active on ACO. And of course, she kind of like it's like she kind of celebrates kind of my how I've stuck around, and it's like she goes like tells me that I'm the guy who kept the lights on on ACO, and I'm kind of forever proud of that. It's just I the reason I kept my subscription going was because like. Autcraft, like, 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 regular Autcraft, just, uh, around the time ACO was, uh, dying, uh, I was also not having a very good time on Autcraft either, and, like, that was also the time when, in that series, I believe that, like, that was when that Iron Farm got shut down, and I, I ran into that issue with the Vindicator farm, or that kind of where I got an argument with an admin, and I got banned over that. And it was also a time that Wither Skeleton farm lagged the server and got me banned for nearly a month. And so the, those are just some really dark times for me. And and of course with. Both that going on on the Autcraft and also ACO being the, the, the desolate wasteland that it was in that time. Uh, I seriously was considering uh, looking to other servers to uh, continue uh, playing Minecraft with uh, and, 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 and open up my open up the doors to, to let me get friends or y you know what I mean and me and Cole got and actually did go to a couple of other servers but that didn't really last too long because uh, Cole got and like he goes through phases a lot where he wants to play Minecraft but then he decides he wants to play another game and we, we, me and him both play that game and we just kind of hop from game to game to game, and 
and our, my, my friendship with him was evolved in many ways and it still go, continues strong today and I expect it to continue for quite a long time to come but anyway getting back to this to the, to the topic ACO was uh, for quite a while like well I could have played more on ACO but it's just with there being almost no players on it it felt like nearly like a single player world more than it did a server and also a lot of different parts of ACO just got neglected because uh, AF was very busy with it maintaining Autcraft and AF was the only admin that uh, was on ECO after uh, Lowell's had uh, left and, and for instance if, I, if, if you wanted to have a portal lit on ECO of course ACO you'd think it being a more vanilla server it would just it would not have a portal plugin, but it, of course it does because a, because AF needs the sense of security and that players aren't just going to make random portals everywhere. And of course, with him being the only person able to light portals, and with him being as busy as he was on Autcraft. If a player on ACO wanted a portal lit, well, they'd be, they'd be lucky if they could get it lit and like a month after they, they put the mob request in. And in fact, uh, some players have had to wait several or multiple months for, 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 for portals to even uh, be lit. And this actually kind of forced me to rely upon the elytra wings to, to get around and in fact I even built uh, a couple of uh, ice tunnel uh, highways uh, so it's like, like where you ride a boat on ice to, to go very fast and that, 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 though, that was just kind of another way I got around though it was it's kind of like the I guess kind of the technological successment or successor to minecart tracks because it's like a minecart track but much faster and yeah but at around I believe it was September or or it might have even been July and uh, 2018 uh, things uh, began to take a bit of take a, a turn for the better for ACO finally and this kind of and, and, and around that time an event, an event occurs that basically starts off the revival period of ACO and this event is ba this particular event is basically uh, the return of Just Blue 333 and TK Dubsta to uh, to ACO. Well, I believe TK came first, and them and then Blue I think followed uh, about about a week or two later, and. And around this time, I believe I actually was still kind of like I think I was still making content for that uh, that let's play that I was doing with Kolka and the the Hermitcraft Junior, and and of course while I was up to that, I witnessed the. Uh, two players returning to ACO and of course I knew none of them but I, I didn't get to know either of them but over basically the better part of the past two years uh, I've gotten to know uh, Blue pretty well and she became and 
And in fact, she was later on to become uh, an admin, and she still is an admin today, and she's one of the best admins uh, that, that, that there ever was on uh, Artcraft. And so, so basically when Blue and TK both started playing, uh, I think also BB was to return, I think a bit later. And, well, to backtrack a little bit, this, uh, about, I believe it was a week or two before Blue and TK were to log on, that, that, that was when ACO had updated to 1.13. And... The thing about 1.13 is what sets it apart from every like any other Minecraft update is well it's not only the update aquatic which brought changes to the oceans that were uh, basically made made the oceans not the base not the same uh, as they were before in 1.12 and prior, like they will never be the same again. But it was an, basically a, a complete rewrite of most, if not all, of Minecraft's code. And this basically meant that, like, plugins, mods, uh, you name it, uh, had, to, had to take significantly longer to... Be, be able to get ports to the, the new version. And many even skipped 1.13 entirely, and it wasn't until 1.14 came out that they finally got, got a port to the, to, the current, to the current version of Minecraft, or at least what was then. And, and of course, now we're in 1.13, 1.15, Sorry, and we're, of course, Minecraft has uh, be gotten much more stable than it has been since uh, 1.13 came, and we now have uh, 1.16 on the horizon. So it's reverse Mojang's really on on a roll with the updates, and I hope they continue this for uh, quite some time. But anyway, so basically when when, when BB had come uh, to ACO, uh, TK, Blue, and BB were to start a base that was uh, later on to become what was dubbed Atlantis, which was basically it's it's what started as Blue, TK, and BB's base, but it became this, like, let's just describe it as a kind of like a, a community base with, like, lots of farms and even uh, a storage system, like a, a storage, an automatic storage room that was, that with auto-sorting. That, 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 like, was shared by the whole server, basically. Or at least everyone who was in Atlantis. And let's just say for a few months, everything went, went great. And Atlantis grew. But as more and more new players joined ACO, and a bit of a... a, a, a a feud broke out between TK and BB. Uh, Atlantis basically uh, became abandoned. I, I, well, at first, it was because players left to build their own bases, but then uh, there was this, let's just say, this feud between TK and BB broke out that. Fine, that just fi finally killed Atlantis, and basically, and, uh, 
and I think TK would eventually wish to get banned for, I don't really remember the details, but uh, he was, let's just say TK got into disputes where he would literally kick people out of Atlantis because he claimed it as his home, even though it was technically Blue and BB's home. And... And eventually, and, 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 and BB even wrote an eviction notice for TK, which is kind of funny. And, and eventually TK was to get banned for, uh, for something. I don't real quite remember the, 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 the details of it, but, but, but he was never, like, banned forever. Like, he, he's... From what I understand, he chose to leave ACO or leave Autcraft entirely, but he's free to return uh, at his will. And enough time has passed that even if he were to return tomorrow, I would welcome him with open arms and treat him as if he's and be a new player. And and like in the first like month or so I've known TK I've I, me and him have actually bonded and in fact one of the first projects we ever did together was the was the, the, the storage system and it the storage room in Atlantis and for reasons of of uh, lag concerns on the server and some players still having homes in Atlantis and Atlantis now mostly under BB's control. Uh, most of Atlantis is essentially off limits now so I, I am not to really enter the area or else I'd be tr tr uh, uh, trespassing in a way so I am instead going to bring up a basically an underground view of all of Atlantis and I'm gonna go over what the different parts were and kind of what my role in Atlantis was and basically how uh, basically how everything went down so we be in a bit So this here is a, a screenshot that I've taken when I was uh, in, in Atlantis, although this would, would have been, this is kind of an older picture, but sort of, basically I would have taken this using the feature of voxel map that lets you kind of see the entire map at once, kind of in this view. and. It's basically kind of the, uh, just kind of all I have to go by for the tour of Atlantis because Atlantis is currently shut down for the reasons I just talked about in the previous segment, but let's go over it here. So... Actually, up here, so let me change the color first. Anyway, up here was the portal to get in. Or it was, it was the old portal. Is that, that was where you used to have to go to enter Atlantis, but later on in its life, uh, it, it was moved down to this room here. And uh, really the only area that of Atlantis that's still active today is 
this area here, which is the villager trading hall. And there also would have been a villager breeder above that would have supplied the villagers to the trading area, but that's no longer operational. That was shut down when a lot of the other things in Atlantis were shut down to, to help with the lag. This, there used to be a tree farm here that I had built, but actually I think I ended up removing that because it gets, this was back in 113, and redstone in 113 was uh, rather unreliable, and I kind of had to, I ended up removing it both for so that reason and possibly was contributing to lag in the area. And up in this area where there was a flower farm that was basically that would grow the, the two high flowers using bone meal. And this was a, sh a sheep farm. Well, it's really mostly a wool farm, so, so you could basically shear sheep to get, like, unlimited wool, but it wasn't really used that much. And this room at the very end, or, or at the, or the very southern end, was, uh, was actually a, a calm room, and... And to my viewers or to my audience that is kind of unfamiliar with Otcraft, a, a calm room is basically, it, it lets some players who need to, like, like a way to calm down or in game, basically, basically a place to do just that. And often, like... Of course, so whether it's uh, you're, because you're angry or if it's you just need to calm down for any other reason, then that's kind of what you would allow you to do that but in game. And it's basically, of course, all crafts calm rooms are even more like elaborate than this was, but this is just kind of a an attempt for one in, in, in Atlantis, so Atlantis would have one. And basically this, that entire area was the community sorter. And it's basically how a lot of the storage systems in Minecraft work with hoppers, where pretty much you just put any item in and it gets sorted into the, the correct chests. And it's basically, this was kind of meant for basically all the members of, the Atlant of Atlantis to basically... It's like a community storage for everyone to use, but the rule was that basically if you take items out, you have to return items 
basically say if you needed four stacks of glass for a project. I mean, you can take that four stacks out if it's there, but but, but, but later on you are to put that put that glass back and. And me as a player, I kind of, this was something that I kind of had a hard time adapting to because back when I was, back when I had lived, it was around this point, like basically when I met TK and I got to know him, and and, and of course me and TK were actually were the ones that built the sorter, and but, but kind of by that point, I just began to call Atlantis home. And this really differs from the time when I called Colgutten's base home. And that basically the storage was not just free reign. I could take whatever I want whenever I needed it. I had to, of course, just think about it more. and. If I take something out, I got to put it back later. And let's just say I kind of developed, a, I still had that bad habit from kind of, kind of as like it was carried over from when I was playing in Colgutten space where I just would take items out whenever I needed, whenever I wanted them. And let's just say that made TK upset and it made BB and Blue upset as well. And and I did learn my lesson, but let's just say I kind of learned it the hard way. But I didn't never got in any trouble. Just it's it's just kind of blue. And TK had a, had a talk to with me about it. And yeah. And the kind of another contribution of mine to Atlantis was the this was the kelp farm and the auto smelter. And this area actually had seen quite a few changes so it was basically I built the smelter at first, and then TK thought he could build do he could build a better smelter, so he just ripped mine out and built a, a, a new one. And then after, and, but then I didn't exactly agree with his decision to do that, and it just literally he also basically just built his own smelter without telling me and this and, and, and that and kind of his kind of that trait of his kind of led to let's just say it led to turmoil in Atlantis and but but eventually I replaced the I rebuilt the smelter again and the, the third design that I had built was to kind of remain in use and then later on, I changed it to a different design in the in, in an attempt to reduce lag, but that, that didn't actually help. And and the kelp farm was a kind of a well, kelp farm is kind of a funny story. So. Basically, this over here was where the kelp farm used to be. And, but uh, it was just kind of a very small little kelp farm. And I decided I kind of wanted a larger one so that I, I could produce kelp faster and be able to actually fuel the uh, furnaces better and 
initially I what I did was I expanded the kelp farm into this area. So like if we zoom in like the kelp farm used to occupy that area that I highlighted in blue, but this room that I highlighted, I'm highlighting in green, was actually a certain area that I was not supposed to touch as it was. I believe it was Riley's headroom, or like basically just to display her mob heads that she collected. And so basically what occurred was this room actually was in a rather, let's just say, so I guess somebody griefed it. And I, when I saw the, when I saw the area, I thought, well, uh, it's probably no longer, probably someone, to, it's whoever was using it no longer needs it anymore. And, at least that's what I thought, and then I basically I expanded the kelp farm so that basically it, it went into that room and, and it occupied this area here. And and then let's just say uh, the Donster and Blue, uh, who were both admins at the time, noticed what happened and weren't happy with me and I don't remember what what happened after that I think it was they just reverted what happened and I, I don't remember I got getting ban banned for even for a day or anything like that it was just they reverted what happened but I did learn my lesson from that, and well, basically what I did is I then built moved the kelp farm over here, and so it was like behind the auto smelter, and I think actually I'm not sure if it's visible on this map, but there was kind of a corridor that went from the where, where the sorting where the sorter room was and then it went into about here and kind of the reason for that was the this kelp as kelp blocks as furnace fuel is not entirely automated and is, well, of course, the farming of kelp and the smelting of the kelp to dried kelp can be automated. Uh, making it into kelp blocks, you, you have to do manually. So this area here where my cursor is, that's where that process was carried out. And this area here was kind of added in later, though it was uh, an attempt by TK to up, ramp up the dried kelp production. And, uh, uh, yeah. But then... So another kind of trait about TK is, is that he also kind of has a, like a tendency to like to abuse certain uh, game exploits that are illegal on, on multiplayer servers. Like for instance, dupe glitches and and even finding the seed and other things 
And yeah. And so basically what this area here was is basically uh, so at one point TK had, uh, had acquired basically like items that you're not supposed to acquire in survival, such as mob spawners, bedrock, dragon eggs, and, and, and let's say there was a certain event on kind of earlier in ACO before the, the silent period that where a lot of players were able to obtain creative items and Let's just say TK kind of held on to those items and he found a way to dupe them. And uh, so I guess he decided to place those pig spawners there as a. And, and he basically made a farm that would like produce pork and even smelt it and it would go into the auto sorter. And that was and that was actually a pretty decent food source for us, but I think eventually, I think it was I think it was the the Donster because he was the admin at that time, but I think he 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 actually noticed what was going on and then he he just removed those spawners and yeah. And this is a is the s slime farm that was in Atlantis. And it was basically to uh It's just two slime chunks to side by side, basically. And from what I remember, I think TK started digging out the hole, and then I built some of the the, the spawning pads and the item collection. So it was kind of both me and TK built that, as well as uh, also the auto sorter. Uh, kind of what happened with the auto sorter was I, I initially had a, I initially I had planned to go with a, a smaller design that was used less hoppers than what TK uh, ended up building, or what he decided to build, and. It's like literally this like one night I was I like we dug out this whole room and then I wake up to the the the, the storage system being built. And that was another thing kind of uh, TK often did because it's because he was really the only like is it, at this point in time he was really the only player who was like in the oh, who who was in Europe and pretty much everyone else was in North America and it's like literally he would uh kind of use the time zone gap to his advantage and it's like it's like whenever most of the Americans players would be asleep, he would be up and of course he would he he it's just like he'd be able to do all these builds before we'd be able to get on. And let's just say a lot of his, those tactics of his kind of contributed to uh what what the public opinion was of him and just kind of what went down with uh you know the the feud between him and BB and kind of and there's kind of what led to the the, the the demise of Atlantis and yeah
And this section that I'm highlighting in yellow was uh, was this storage for the carrot and potato farms. And basically that there there they were kind of basically the main source of emeralds for more items to trade with the villagers down here to get emeralds. Although later on I also was to build my own I think it was a melon and pumpkin farm so so that I could trade for for emeralds. We said uh, is the melon and pumpkins are are actually give you more emeralds per item. Yeah, so I kind of went with that method to get emeralds faster than this farm would provide. And often there are times when this farm actually ran out of stock and and and, and I actually had to go and AFK like I think in this room over here there was an AFK pole that you that was able to to use to basically AFK keep that farm running to re replenish items that the players would take out and and of course that destroy became another problem that was plaguing Atlantis although it's just really one of the one of the f the first time I th that I I think anyway in ACO history that kind of a base like this uh, happened, but uh, so I guess a lot of play players weren't exactly familiar with the idea and didn't exactly use it as as intended, but Atlantis really like. It was, like for me, it was like kind of, it got me back into playing on ACO, and it got me to know uh, TK and Blue and BB and a lot of the other players who were returning to ACO at around that time. And, and a bit later on, Telly asked to join ACO and I think for a brief moment he was in Atlantis but he then left to build his own base which I'm going to cover later in this video and so really what's kind of how, how Atlantis came to its end was well at first it was players would were, were kind of leaving because uh, like some players left off to build their own bases but there are still players who had apartments in Atlantis and still lived there and then but but then basically TK and BB kind of uh, didn't get along very well and so basically TK was uh, essentially his play style was, uh, was kind of a lot like mine which is like to build as many farms as possible and automate as much as possible but and but also he had an obsession with uh, like server server breaking exploits that kind of was a contributing factor to him getting banned and also but but BB kind of, of course was like well for one thing BB had a very slow computer that just couldn't handle uh, farms and just in any areas with lag, BB would feel it the worst. And of course, 
It's like, what are we uh, in the laggiest parts of Atlantis? He would be lucky to get 10 frames per second. And like, like at times when I was getting around 30 frames per second. And I just say BB just wasn't really too happy about kind of the direction Atlantis was going. Just they're kind of for that, kind of just for that reason alone. And also, when the first Hitman, uh, or at least the first Hitman was of the ACO revival period, which actually Timber88 hosted, but she was on just for a brief moment, at least long enough to host, I think was the, the was the, that, that particular Hitman. And well, 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 she was the one who decided all, all, all the teams and, you know, who's on, who's, who's, like, like, whose target is whose, and etc. And, and so TK, how he, kind of how he would play Hitman, was he basically, he planned out exactly what, uh, like his exact plan of attack for each target that he was to receive, and and of course he he would really go to town on like as as far as gear that he would equip to pre pre prepare for combat, and let's just say he actually lost to Quack Triple Four, and. Of course, he was one of he was he was known to be one of the one of the best players at PvP. Although I never personally got to know him or even got to f go up against him in PvP, and and in fact, he actually was I think my target in in, in that particular hitman, but. I was never able to fight Quack. Yeah, I think before TK went up against Quack, I actually died to my target because I so it was because of a certain move that seemed like a a good desperate move to, but it it backfired on me and I lost. And so anyway, what happened was I think it. I don't remember the exact location I don't where TK and Quack actually fought, but were faced off against one another. But I think you know TK just wasn't all too happy, and and in fact, a lot of the time he felt like he controlled all of Atlantis, even though he. That just wasn't fair to Blue and uh, BB, and and even even wasn't fair to me either. And so it's like literally just all because he lost Hitman, basically all of Atlantis, he just he like closed it. It's like it's my home, get out. And I don't I don't care if I don't care if you live here, get out. And. And then, then that was also kind of a, another contributing factor, at least to at least to TK getting banned. But and then, but then after TK leaves ACO, uh, basically, basically Blue just passes ownership of basically all of Atlantis from basically this point to. Just after the villager trading hall, it's basically basically B, under BB's ownership. And but before that happened, basically there there was this one day where Blue just said uh, everyone can just go in and any of the redstone in Atlantis or, uh, of course, like that. Of course, as ACO was growing, 
Atlantis became more and more of a lag problem for for the server. And basically, kind of what happened was you had, of course, you had a big, all these farms, like the auto smelter, the kelp farm, the slime farm, and the, the, the sp big auto sorter that I think had over a thousand hoppers in this section here. And then probably, heck, or probably 200, 100, maybe 200 villagers in this area. And then, of course, farms down here. And then this wasn't, there wasn't that many sheep here, but anyway, there is a sheep here. And up in this area, there were aquariums that had probably a hundred fish in each and so yeah if you just imagine like all this stuff kind of all in one area that would conspire to, to, to create lots and lots of lag and basically and, and then and, and but but kind of another thing was then BB had noticed how many players have taken things out of the sorter. And it literally got to a point where there's like nothing left in the sorter. And, and by that point, they just, Wu and BB just said, well, Atlantis is just free reign. Just come in, take everything out that you want. And, and then we're going to close down Atlantis later because it's still a lag problem. And so I think it was I t t tore down the tree farm here because it just, it also just wasn't very reliable. And I'm thinking of also, this was back in 113 when Redstone also got affected by the the unoptimization in 1.13, and it's just that tree farm kept breaking constantly, and and then also I kind of helped tore, tear out the kelp farm, and I think Riley actually removed this auto smelter, and the auto sorter was just done by a lot of different players, and, and it's just literally like. The auto sorter and in air quotes unnecessary redstone in Atlantis was removed to, to help with lag. And it's basically and, and that was kind of the event that actually finally forced me to move out of Atlantis completely. Oh, and also I forgot to mention this was a an ice tunnel that I made that went to an area that I did all my my speed mining in, my haste two mining, and I also that's where I built a my melon and pump pumpkin farm, which I'm gonna talk about in a late possibly the next video. And and then eventually I also connected that up to my base with another long ice tunnel. And, but that was before, uh, well, but I actually, I actually started that project back when, uh, AF was the only per player, the, the only admin, sorry, to light portals. And, but, but, that, but then, uh, but then, but then Donnie became admin, and then for reasons I can't really go into that deeply, he was removed from admin, and then we were kind of stuck with AF as the only admin for a little while until Blue became admin, and and yeah, though, though, though I eventually I did actually finish that tunnel. And it, I still use it to this day. And kind of by that point, I, but I believe it was like before then, I actually, like I think it was 
when a lot of the drama with TK and BB started, I that's when I started the process of building my new base and prepping to move out of Atlantis, but it wasn't until uh, that, that day when all the quote-unquote an unnecessary redstone was removed from Atlantis. That, that, that was when I finally decided to move out entirely. And so that, was the, that was the story of Atlantis. And, and even to this day, it still sits basically empty, basically or and, and just off limits from basically this line here upwards. It's all off limits. Uh, at least and, until further notice. And while and I while I am uh, kind of uh, awaiting the day when Atlantis does get reopened, I by now I kind of have my my very own base that's. I'm pretty, pretty much all to myself, and I can do what I want as long as I'm not causing lag on the server. And, uh, yeah. Anyway, on to the next segment of the video.
Oh, anyway, I figured I'd come, she come to Atlantis on, in person on ACO and at least explore the parts of it that I can explore in this video without uh, risking uh, or any, anyth anything, uh, any builds being griefed or whatever. And anyway, this is... Most of the builds that, uh, that you're looking at, at least everything with the orange uh, on it, at least, were, were all built by TK. And, of course, this was meant to be the lobby of Atlantis. But, uh, of course, when the whole feud between TK and BB came out, came about and TK was banned, this became essentially BB's home. And I'm pretty sure most of this now belongs to him as well. And th those were the carrot and potato farms, but they're no longer functional. And that was the villager reader for the trading hall, but it's no longer working either. And that was Telly's, Telly Ashen's first base. And... And I remember the day that Telly first came on ACO. It was, uh, it was like it was shortly, very shortly thereafter, uh, after I had uploaded the, like, like after I've uploaded my videos about, uh, basically the first ever uh, player of the month, at least, like, of the revival period of ACO. And, and of course, he uh, joined uh, ACO after m kind of, as kind of like after my video came out. And I thought that was really cool. But, of course, Vitaly Ashton leads kind of an interesting uh, life. I mean, he first joined, he was like extremely shy and would never, hardly ever talk on Discord. But he was very active uh, in, in game. But then for a little while, he actually started to talking on voice. And but unfortunately, due to some uh, like circumstances uh, in his uh, family and his household, and probably just him getting shy uh, as a result of ACO's like of ACO's. Uh, growth uh, in, in the past year or two he's grown silent again and now he hardly ever he, he never I don't know if I'll ever hear his voice again but uh, tell me if you're telly Ashton if you're watching then I've we've, we've had a great uh, while we've not probably gotten the best, gotten along the best, so uh, I would say, uh, I've, 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 we've, we've had, uh, I guess, a great time in the previous few couple of years, and I hope that your, the rest of your life goes well, and the rest of your time on ECO goes great as well, and, and there is, to come a kind of another event that that's the reason why I say that I don't that, that I never got along with Telly that well but I pro probably have to I don't think I can cover that in this video so uh, this is more about uh, Atlantis and kind of the what's kicked off the revival period and, yeah.
And so, I think also, uh, and and this is the, the, the and also at this time, I kind of started. I I I have uploaded a few videos of not only the like like the 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 player the the the, the week the month, but it was also I also uploaded an Atlantis tour and also. My uh, some of so I guess it's some uh, kind of events that happened then and, and yeah. This was uh, uh, one of Blue's older bases, and kind of a funny story. The I don't actually remember which of these two ships it was, but one of them uh, I think Blue had built, and then Thick Nick actually built the sails for for part of it, and. Let's just say they kind of look like something that I'm not going to discuss on my YouTube channel because I want to keep this for, I want to keep this clean for all my audience. And uh, yeah, but basically it's kind of a funny story with that one. And let's say there was also a submarine here that was entirely, and it's actually still there, but it's, but the funny thing about that particular build is that was built literally out of TK's iron stash. Or, or we said the, the, the iron he kept in the sorter at, at Atlantis. And I guess just kind of as sort of a, a joke that sort of came out of all the drama between TK and BB and and all that, and of course, Blue decided. To, I guess Blue and BB decided to do that, just to, just for their own way to have fun. And yeah, this actually was some of you might remember, recognize. This was the from the 75 uh, players event. Though that's, that occurred later on in ACO's history than what we're currently talking about in this video. Some of my viewers might also recognize this area, and it was in one of one of the videos I uploaded during the ACO revival period, and also a fairly recent video. And this was this is an underwater PvP arena that was kind of uh, supposed to be all around the the theme of uh, basically like in a coral reef and. Because that was kind of what Atlantis was all themed around. And basically it got it saw use when it first opened and it, but it sat basically abandoned when Atlantis was abandoned. And but just now it's recently getting more attention. And I personally would like to see it open up as a a PvP arena, like as in like having a portal link to it. And I'm pretty sure Blue would 
probably do that shortly, but she's just been busy and not feeling well of what I've heard. And this particular building or house is actually the location that I had lost the that I, that I had lost the PVP or or what am I talking about? This was when I lost Hitman. It was one of the first Hitman uh, that that uh, on ACO in the revival period. And let's just say uh, Thick Nick was after me and I was going to kill him with a lava bucket, but I ended up killing myself and lost all my gear. And that was just, that was just, for, that was, let's say I was kind of an embarrassing moment for me. I have a lot more areas I actually want to show in this video, but it's running on rather long. This area over here, I believe, actually would have been Blue's uh, house in, in Atlantis. And I believe over here in this area would have been BB's house. And As much as I want to actually go in there and show off this area that's underground of in Atlantis, because I, I did was able to experience it, but I'm pretty sure it's uh, Blue and BB would prohibit it. Although it seems to be open right here. But I'm not gonna mess with it. Though, there was one particular, uh, though during the, uh, the, the kind of that period where Atlantis was still active, I, there, that, let's say there was one particular event that kind of does go down in history on, but didn't make the timeline because of let's just say it it also did involve TK and it he and, and he he did a certain thing that let's just say seemed like a great idea at the time, but it just became uh something really ambitious and in fact it hurt AF's trust and uh, a, 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 a lot of, basically, not, not only TK, but a lot of us, actually. And basically what, what, what happened was, I believe ACO had some kind of an update, and Spawn essentially had protection turned off, but 
of accidentally. And let's just say TK noticed that and uh, he kind of jumped at that opportunity to, to basically revamp Spawn because this was still the time when ACO was neglected by Autism Father and um, I mean, while it was it's finally beginning to gain popularity again, it was still neglected by Autism Father because he was just busy with uh, ACO and I mean, Autcraft and whatever else was going on in his life. And, and then let's say TK had this bright idea to what's basically at first remove most of the things in spawn like the cobwebs and the M portal where it would literally drop mobs on your head and basically and and, and then and then it became where I think it was Weyungi also had a plan for spawn and and then and then TK wanted to basically take out all the valuable resources in Spawn, and then, but but then but the, but around that time it just seemed like we were just it was just going to improve Spawn and make it like more friendly and, and less dangerous. But and then but then we all woke up to. Basically, TK revamping the the spawn into something completely different, and but that but that was when AF finally noticed and what was going on, and the spawn protection was turned back on, and but when the, but then spawn was stuck in that phase of being half finished with whatever TK was building, and. And Spawn was stuck like that, I think, probably for probably a probably a month, maybe even two months. But 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 then finally the came. But then the, the, there was a day when it was finally revamped back to what it originally was. You know, because this was a this was basically the revival period was basically all of the. the, the the ACO members that we said have been returning, basically banding together to kind of resurrect ACO from the ashes, and even without uh, an admin to back us up. And but we were to receive an admin or two, and of course the first admin would have been the Donster. And which started which started off rather great, and he proved to be a great admin. But let's just say later on in his career, he may have done some things that an admin should never do, and he got his admin status revoked. And this, let's just say this and this whole other. Explosion of drama happened on Autcraft at around that same time, and which led to uh, basically a, a bunch of Autcraft staff base and much, and, and also some of its player base basically fish, like basically seceding away and going off to start their own server, which. I'm not going to tell the name of it for because it's in my best interest not to, and kind of for the for just for the sake of my audience that that loves Autcraft, and and in fact I am kind of against that whole idea of them just breaking away, starting their own server, and even going as far as to rob AC's player base. To, to, to go over to their server, but we're, we're not going to go into that any farther. Let's leave it at that. And yeah, and 
Well, just to kind of end this up, end this video off in a positive note. This was uh, basically the what I what I have been waiting for to happen on ACO for the past uh, about half a year, and. While, while there was still kind of a long, bumpy road ahead of us, uh, we, we were at least on the right path. And or at least ACO as a, as, a, as a whole was on the right, going on the right path. And, uh, in the next video, I'm going to talk about the, my current base on ACO and how that started. And some farms that both I built on my own and some that were collaboration with other players. And also, I, I don't know if I'll be able to cover the, the nether hub and the new spawn in that episode. But that, that, might, that might be its own video as well. But... Anyway, stay tuned for what's to come next. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Remember to rate, comment, like, and subscribe. And this is Dusty Circuit signing off. Bye!